Hey everyone, Legend here, and I've been thinking a whole lot recently about that awesome trip that me and Molly took to Europe last year. We spent almost three weeks seeing the countries of the Netherlands, Denmark, France, Belgium, and Germany, going to I think 12 or 13 theme parks, so I've been thinking a whole lot about that, and then I, I started thinking about all of the rides we went on, and in this video here, I am going to rank them, my 27 favorite rides I went on while in Europe. Couple of quick notes. Now, this is only going to be about the trip last year to those parks we went to. I'm not going to include rides from the 2016 trip to the UK. So, you won't see things like Nemesis on this list or Wallace and Gromit or the, the Spirit of England, all those fun rides that they have in the UK. Not going to be on this list. Also, I want to stress these are my favorite rides and the ones when I think about this trip that I remember. Now, that might not mean these are great rides. This is not the best rides. These are just my favorite rides. And they'll be my favorite rides for all sorts of different reasons. All right, let's get to the list. Starting off with number 27, and that is Tornado at Bakken. And now, I believe this is the only Intamin spinning coaster ever built, and this thing, it is intense, uh, surprisingly intense too, like when you drop off the lift, there's like a, kind of a secondary lift that goes quicker, sort of acting as a boost launch to send you into this thing, it goes into and out of a barn, it just uh, one of the more intense roller coasters I went on in this entire trip, and it, it was super unique. Number 26 is from Toverland, and that's Maximum Blitz Bomb. This is a bob cart style ride, so if you think of like an alpine coaster, except in this version it is powered, so it's not gravity fed like the ones you'll see in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. Everything runs on a buzz bar, but you still get to control your speed. Also, this one had um, some limited theming on it and uh, an interesting queue, but uh, I've never been on a ride like this, so that's why this comes in at number 26. Alright guys, now I warned you, these are not the best rides in Europe. And I think 25 will show that off well. At 25 is the Hollywood Tour at Fantasialand. This is not a good ride. This is a ride, it looks like somebody went on the, the old great movie ride at Disney's Hollywood Studios and they went on the Universal Tram Tour in Hollywood and say, that, I want that, but I don't want to spend any money. Also make it weird. Uh, but man, I, I just, if I watch the video of this ride, I can't help but laugh. It is, it is cheesy. It is weird. Uh, definitely a little bit dated on the animatronic side now, but also uh, big sets and stuff like that. I mean, how could you hate a ride that has a monkey jet skiing on it? Uh, there's also King Kong and Jaws and a giant tarantula. It is a. It was something else. Number 24 takes us to Movie Park Germany for Star Trek Operation Enterprise. This ride starts with a really cool uh, pre-show experience where you get uh, beamed up to a budget version of the Starship Enterprise. And then the ride itself is a forwards and backwards Mac coaster. Super duper smooth. This ride is just butter smooth. I would say I, I liked my ride in the back row better than my ride in the front row. You got to go farther up that twisted spike and you actually got some pretty good airtime on this ride. Number 23 takes us to Disneyland Paris and Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, I, anytime you go on a Pirates of the Caribbean ride, it's great. Those are they're great rides. This one for me, I don't think it's as good as the one in Disneyland in California. Definitely better than the one at Walt Disney World here. Um, had some cool scenes in it that were not in either version. Of course, the famous sword fighting par pirates. And um, that, that landed at number 23. All right. Yeah. Uh, the polar opposite of that pirate ride is the pirate ride that comes in at number 22. And that is a just a pirate ship, as your normal swinging ship kind of ride that was at a fun fair in France. But the thing that made this interesting was on both ends of the pirate ship, they had cages that you could go and stand in while the ride was in operation. There was no safety restraints in there. You're just locked in a cage. You could jump around like an idiot trying to get like ultra airtime. This was so fun. So wild, such such a thing you would never see in the United States that it, it had to make the list. It, it just had to. Number 21 takes us to Tivoli Gardens, the wonderful park in Copenhagen, and the Flying Trunk Dark Ride. This was a, a, a very gentle ride, a very relaxing, uh, soothing kind of ride. You rode in these big giant, kind of like, they seem like treasure chests. I'm sure they're probably trunks because it's the flying trunk after all. And you got a button where you could switch your language if you wanted to. And these scenes were done very much in similar sign of dolls that you would see on It's a Small World. But the ride was nice. Also, like as a guy going to the, the town for his first time, Hans Christian Andersen is a big deal over there. And uh, this ride takes you through all of his stories as his hometown was Copenhagen for a while. 
and that it was just really nice. I'm a dark ride guy anyway, so that that is number 21. Uh, a big swing of difference here. At number 20, we go to Amsterdam and the Over the Edge Sensational Swing. Now, this is not in a theme park. This is the Adam Lookout Tower. Uh, you get an amazing view of the city of Amsterdam. Really cool elevator ride up there, too. But the highlight is this Over the Edge Swing, and it's sort of like a powered playground swing, except you're on the top of a building. And as you can see in this video, I kind of have the heebie-jeebies. Like, I'm fine with heights on a roller coaster, but when you, you hang me over the side of a building or on a sky coaster, then, it, then I sort of get the heebie-jeebies. And this, I, I don't know who built this thing either. I mean, it's, it's a unique ride system. I don't think I've seen anything like this in my travels. 19 takes us to one of my favorite theme parks in the entire world, and that is Efteling for Joris and the Drac. This is a GCI racing dueling kind of roller coaster, and they're always fun rides. I love any roller coaster with racing elements, and this one does it really well. When you come back into the station, the flag's lower for the winning side. Uh, one knock on this ride, there's a big giant like animatronic dragon kind of guy. I think he breathes fire, but he was broken during my visit, but he was still pretty cool. We stay at Efteling for number 18, and that is Drumflucht, which is a suspended dark ride. So if you think about like the same set of ride vehicle you would have at Peter Pan at Disneyland or Disney World, something similar to that. And this ride takes you to the world of like fairies and trolls. And this is a, a dark ride on a grand scale with some just gigantic sets, really wonderful stuff, very, very whimsical and absolutely well done. You know, it's, it's one of the, the better dark rides you can find outside of, you know, a Disney or Universal. Uh, speaking of Disney, we're back over there at number 17, heading to the Studios Park this time for Ratatouille the Adventure, which is a trackless 3D dark ride, and this was just adorable. This I, I, I like to use the word adorable a lot, and uh, Ratatouille the Adventure is an adorable ride. Uh, I'm excited that it's going to be coming to Epcot right down the block from me, so I can ride it all the time. You get some of the cutest ride cards ever. Um, I mean, not, not a spectacular ride by any means, but uh, I think it works really well in this park, and it's going to work very, very well when it comes to Epcot later this year. Number 16, probably the oldest ride on this list, and that is the roller coaster at Tivoli Gardens. And uh, this is another one of those things where I've always wanted to ride a roller coaster like this. This is one where you have a brake man that rides the roller coaster with you and controls the speed of it. So uh, going on like just an old-timey piece of history like this, I think this ride is over 100 years old. So getting to do, finally go on a ride like that was really awesome. Also, it was just it's built like all around a fake mountain as well. So it, it's not like it's just an average roller coaster. You're just, it's done up in a very, very nice way, and you're sort of riding a piece of history. Number 15 combines two of my favorite things into one thing, and that is theme park rides and drinking, as number 15 is La Aero Laugh at Park Asterix outside of Paris, and this is awesome. It's essentially a big observation tower, but you get to bring a beer on, like it's an upcharge ride. You have to buy like a beer or an espresso or something like that to get on. And then they take you up and they spin you around really slowly, and you get to this great view of Park Asterix while enjoying a beer and uh, man, I, I absolutely love that. 14 is another dark ride. This is Area 51 at Movie Park Germany. And this is an awesome dark ride. It's uh, lots of big sets in here, lots of alien animatronics. It's a, a multiple multiple drop of water ride too. I will say you get drenched. I, I normally don't like draining drenched, so that sort of tells you how good this ride is. There's also a great backwards segment where the, the whole area is caving in. Interesting enough, we stay at Water Rides for number 13, and that is Pulsar at Wallaby, Belgium. This is one of these max power splash rides where you go up and down. It's a roller coaster, and then at some point they fill in the lagoon, and you come down for the big giant wave. Uh, this is something they're going to be building at Six Flags Over Texas this year. But man, this ride is great. The, the people at Six Flags Over Texas are real lucky to have this because this is fun. It's an absolute blast, and it's not like some of those shoot the shoots rides where you just you essentially just cause a big splash and there's no other fun elements. It's a really really fun ride. Number twelve, we're back at Disneyland for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, the wildest ride in the wilderness, and the Paris version of this is absolutely out of the three Big Thunders I've been on, it, it is the best one, and it's not even close. This one, it, it, it's spectacular. Essentially, it exists on the uh, what would be considered like Tom Sawyer Island in most of the other parks. And so you got a big tunnel to go in and out. It is beautiful. There's a goat that's eating someone's pants. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Ah, man, I love Big Thunder in Paris. Again, uh, just showing like how my favorite rides could be so different. Number 11 was a Tagata at a fun fair in Paris. 
Now, I'm one of those guys, I've grown up, you know, with the internet and theme parks and stuff like that, so I've seen all the stuff from the guys at TPR and stuff like that, so, man, once I saw that, oh my gosh, this fun fair had a Tagata, I had to ride it, and it was as wild as I would hoped it would be, oh man, it, it, I, honestly, it is Molly's, I think, least favorite ride of all time, she did not Tagata very well, she fell and landed on the floor, but man, for me, I love the wildness, the craziness, the fact that, oh, we're, we're not going to see this in the States. So, Tagata, number 11. Number 10 takes us back to Toverland, and this is Phoenix, the B&M wing coaster. And I think it's one of the better B&M wing coasters out there. First of all, before you even go up the lift, there's a really cool queue. You've got some pepper ghost effect in the queue. And then the ride itself, you got a big, like, animatronic dragon before you go up the lift. And then the ride itself, it's very snappy. You get some airtime. You get some great kind of keyhole elements. Uh, really, really cool helix. So I, I would say it's, it's probably my second favorite wing coaster out there. I would say probably, like, Swarm over in the UK a little bit better, but Phoenix is really good. And it, Phoenix was much, much more expensive to build than number nine. And this was the boat jump at Fritz Park Schlossbeck, right near Movie Park, Germany. This is a park where most of the rides you operate yourself, including this one here. So you sit down into this little boat thing, you put your own restraint on, you pull the cord and away you go up. You slowly climb backwards up this probably about 30 foot lift and then it drops you and then you, you jump and land in a lake. Uh, unfortunately, the lake does look like it's made out of ecto cooler, so thankfully I did not get very wet on this thing as I fear the, <laughs> that liquid could like burn through your clothes for the looks of it. But man, it, this was again wild, different, something I've always wanted to do once I knew it existed. Number eight, actually outside of a theme park once again, and it's a, uh, a simulator attraction called This Is Holland, which is a flying theater style ride, so similar to something like Soren or the one at Mall of America. Uh, I really enjoy these type of rides, and this one was no exception. Very well done, multiple pre-shows, nice long ride, really, really well done. Uh, awesome way to see all of Holland in a, a simulator type fashion. Number seven is Winges, the pair of spinning roller coasters over at Fantasia Land. And these are great, man. These are, uh, this is really, I would say, is an underrated ride because these, these spinning coasters do so much and, and you would not know they're coming. So they, it hides its secrets very well. Skip ahead about 10 seconds if you don't want to hear some of those secrets. Because, man, it does some crazy stuff. Like there's an elevator lift and a slanted drop at the end and tilt tracks and drop, drop tracks. This thing does a whole bunch of stuff. It goes in the big atrium area into some back areas. Wind just is awesome. Number six is another indoor roller coaster, and that is Van Helsing's Factory at Movie Park, Germany. It's uh, labeled as a Gerschlauer bobsled roller coaster. The first of a couple of them I went on this on this trip, and this one was, a, it's a, they're really, really smooth rides. Super duper smooth. You're in cars that look like a traditional wild mouse, but it doesn't really do a lot of wild mouse stuff. And what made this ride unique is, man, it, it's just, first of all, it's a very weird theme. It's like uh, Van Helsing, the, the vampire hunter, it's in some sort of like factory and parking garage thing. Uh, a little weird, but a big sets, uh, lots of fun different rooms. And I, I love, I'm a sucker for indoor roller coasters, so that one, that one got me. All right, guys, we made it to the top five. And number five is Challenge of Tutankhamen at Wallaby, Belgium. This is awesome. This is, uh, in my opinion, the best ride Sally has ever built. This is the best shooting dark ride I have ever been on. And I, I absolutely loved it. Giant sets, giant animatronics, fire. Uh, depending on how well you score, you get a different ending. It, I, I love ancient Egypt stuff anyway, and this ride, it does it so well. It's a nice long ride, and it just, oh, it's so cool. Really, really well done. Also, one you do not hear a lot about, but I can't recommend it off. Also, yes, I know if you watch all the videos, I'm a bad nerd. In my Six Flags Magic Mountain video, I said Justice League was my favorite shooting dark ride. I forgot this ride existed. Challenge of Tutankhamun is my favorite shooting dark ride. Staying with that ancient Egypt theme for ride number four is Osiris at Park Asterix, a b &M inverted roller coaster, very similar to my beloved Montu right down the road at Busch Gardens, Tampa. And this ride is great. I mean, b &M inverts are always really fun. And this one really does it up well because you've got so many like trenches and stuff you dig in and out of. There's an absolutely fantastic segment of the ride where you go like into a tunnel and then you sort of come up a waterfall. Really, really liked Osiris. 
Uh, number three is Phantom Manor, the highest ranked Disney ride on the list at Disneyland Paris. This is the their version of a haunted mansion. And it's, it's great. It's a little bit more macabre than the ones we have here in the States. It has an old Western, like, Demon Frontierland segment that's just amazing. And it, it's really well done. This is, the, I, in my opinion, this is the gem of Disneyland Paris. And uh, a ride I wish they sold merch for. They had, like, no merch for it. Number two takes us back to Efteling and Symbolica, which is kind of like the, they're now their their landmark ride. It's in the the castle that's the centerpiece of the park. It is a trackless dark ride uh, with some interactivity. Uh, it's got this upstand, incredible pre-show with these staircases that split open. Then you walk through them. Uh, there's also this is another ride with you know world class animatronics from Garner Holt. Big giant rooms. It's done on a grand scale. And uh, some other some parts that use the trackless technology. Really, really good. There's different paths you could take. And I can't say enough good things about Symbolica. I wish I would have gotten the opportunity to ride it more than just two times. And number one, and this was a pretty easy number one for me, it is the incredible Taran at Fantasia Land. In my opinion, this is my number two steel roller coaster I've ever been on. Uh, possibly the most beautiful roller coaster in the world, because I mean, holy cow, look at all that rock work. It's a multi launch Intamin roller coaster. Uh, interwoven with another like junior boomerang roller coaster and just this amazing piece of theme park design i i can't say enough good things about taron uh man it's so good it is just so good airtime speed the visuals the near misses it is it's it's worth booking a trip to cologne germany to go ride uh taron and guys that's my list i i hope you enjoyed taking a look back at uh, some of the, my favorite rides from the European trip. I do have tour and review videos of every single park I went to on that trip. They're all on the, uh, the theme park tour playlist that's on the channel. Uh, click the link in the description below to check that out. And uh, thanks for watching.